Guildfield Law Academy, the place where you can quickly learn how to maximize the value of your businesses and safeguard your commercial and personal interests. I'm joined by David Dees, and today we're going to talk about poaching. Not the type that goes on in the countryside, but what happens when an unscrupulous employee leaves to join a competitor. David, this is a pretty common problem, isn't it? It certainly is. We live in a very competitive world. And for most businesses, the people are the most valuable asset that they've got. So obviously, those individuals may have an idea that they can get paid more somewhere else. People may be after your employees, and you need to make sure that they don't walk off with something that's really valuable to you. Now, what can potentially go wrong here? Obviously, people forward plan, there's company secrets. How do people make sure that they're not going to lose their employees and obviously leak that information? Well, obviously, you can't stop people working for somebody else. But what you want to try and do is limit the damage. A particular issue that comes up, of course, is your client list. That individual may be very important in your organization, will have access to very important information. Your client list, typically, but also your pricing list. When they go and work for somebody else, potentially your competitor now has that information. It's very difficult to stop that happening. But there are some things that you can do. Tell me about the things you can do. The big problem, to start with the problem, is that the law is against anti-competition. The principle is that competition is a good thing because it's good for consumers, it's good for other businesses that buy services. So you're up against it from the start. But you can draft a senior employee's contract in such a way as to limit what they can do. You use the word poaching, that's a great word to use because that's what the lawyers call it as well. Um, it's about poaching customers and it's about poaching your other employees because as you know often one employee may follow another yes and some headhunters in larger towns are actually looking for teams of people so what you do is you prepare your contracts in such a way as to make it more difficult for an employee who's left firstly to go after your customers and secondly to poach the other employees they've left behind what sort of things can you put in the agreement to make it more difficult for your employees to leave and go to a competitor? There are typically four or five things that you can put in and you've got to craft them very carefully. The first thing is to say that they can't compete with you at all. Now, as I said, the law is against that. So you've got to make it very, very narrow. It's a case of where less is more. So you would have a, a narrow radius around your existing business. and You might limit it for a short period of time, maybe six months. Secondly, with employees, you can limit it by identifying the type of employees they can't poach. So maybe senior staff in the same department to make it narrow. Um, with customers, it's the same thing. If the customer list is very particular and regarded as confidential, they shouldn't be using it. You can limit it by saying if that particular individual has worked with those customers, then those are the customers that are excluded. Now, you can't, of course, you can't stop the other company from ringing somebody up from a phone book. So proof is difficult, but you can put obstacles in the way of it happening. And if it does happen, say these measures are taken and an employee still goes ahead, tries to poach, as we've said, uh, potential clients or previous um, contacts, what could be the consequences of that? Well, um, the consequences are often a nasty dispute. The first thing that you, that you hear when you're um, in business is, one of your more loyal customers will ring you and say, you never guess what, that guy you used to work for, for you rang me up the other day and asked if I would do business with him. So often it's your own customers who let you know. Then you loyalty. go to, <laughs> well, that's good to have loyalty from your customers rather than your ex-employees. You then go and see your solicitor and you write a nasty letter. Um, often what happens is that the employee hasn't told the new employer that they've got a contract with these covenants in it. So ah, one of the okay. first thing you do is you say, here's a copy of that employee's contract. Were you aware that he was subject to restrictions? That's an embarrassing conversation that he's got to have with his new employer. And is the company, the new company, protected if he wasn't aware that, that, that their new employee had these restrictions? Um, that's true. They can, they can say that we didn't know about it and they're innocent. But of course, they're using that information. And once they're on notice that they've used that information, then I think they're in the firing line. Now, we see a lot recently with the increase of social media and things, it's a lot <coughs> easier to poach people, contacting people on networks mm -hmm. such as LinkedIn. 
Is this becoming an increasing problem? I don't think it's becoming an increasing problem. I just think it's a problem. It's always been a problem, particularly in, in very aggressive industries like IT and other types of consultancy. It's always been a problem. And the idea is to produce something that's enforceable. If you go completely mad and say the individual can't work in the UK or the individual can't do anything that relates to the business, it's never going to be enforceable because the court won't give you an order. But if you make it narrow and specific, it's actually easier to enforce. And we often hear about people implementing the term gardening leave. How does mm. that work? Well, that's a very good question. Gardening leave is a clause in an employee's contract where, you, where the employer can ask them to do no work. They don't have to be in the garden, of course, but they're not working. They're, they may have a, noti a long notice period, it might be three months or six months, and during that notice period, the contract will provide that you can make them do nothing, go home if you like. Would they still get paid? Out. They still get paid because they're still under contract. That's a very good device because they are under contract. They can't complain that they've been fired. They're simply working out their notice without doing any work. Now, of course, that's a cost of the employer, but it's better than the alternative in many cases. And are lots of companies now taking that as an option because they'd rather pay the extra cost than risk losing company information? So, absolutely right, yeah, of course they'll do that. Any senior employee should have a clause that enables the company to put them on gardening leave. Because if they're out of circulation for six months, a lot of their contacts are going to go cold. The business can then put in practical steps to mitigate the impact by bringing in an, another individual to talk to that particular customer so that the, the damage is mitigated. And do you ever get individuals coming to you that are perhaps unsure about what they can and can't do in terms of their previous contract? Certainly, yes. Um, people may be thinking about moving but haven't moved yet. And they may be aware that they signed a contract that had these clauses in. So they need to be careful and they, would be, they are well advised to get advice themselves before they make that move. And you can give them some guidance as to how far they can go. Maybe if the new employer has got two offices, maybe you could say, well, maybe you should work a little further away for six months. Um, maybe you emphasize to them that they don't go after the customers that they know are with the company, but there are lots of other fish out there that they can catch. Lovely, well, thank you so much, David. We hope that you've enjoyed today's discussion and if any of the issues mentioned are affecting your business right now then simply call David on the number below and remember to subscribe to all of our videos and we'll also send you news of seminars and other events where Healed Law Academy will be presenting. Bye for now.